black helicopter crowd notion. The tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. It's never seen it. They've been crazy, but now they're right. Black helicopter crowd really is upset. The people are stupid and they're drunk. There'll be a revolution and they're going to lose. There are too many guns and too many people ready to fight them. I am a man of peace, but we have gangsters running this country. Criminals, gangsters. We're normal. We see total criminal takeover, the death of freedom. It is the most corrupt, degenerate, criminal government in American history. I'm trying to awaken people, but look at the morons around you. They're zombies. Welcome to the podcast. You're listening to Black Helicopter News. I'm your host, President Zen One, and we got a great show for you today. For starters, March 22nd marked our one-year anniversary of the show. In the past year, we've accumulated a cult following. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now gaining credibility and validity in the alternative media, and we're winning over the hearts and minds of men and women. We're winning the info war. We're sparking divine consciousness. We're evolving into beings of light and love. We're a group of like-minded people. We are awake. We're highly intelligent. And we truly care about humanity. That's us. Me and you. You, the listenership. I really want to communicate with you more. It's because of you fans why I keep going and why we have one year under our belts. 36 episodes that first year. And I want to increase that number every year exponentially. I'm here for you. I'm here to stop the New World Order. So share this transmission with family, friends, loved ones. All right, folks. So I tried recording this episode twice and failed both times. Took two days. Right after my internship, I came in, tried to record the first time. Right after I got done editing and ready to mix down, my laptop crashed. That was version one of episode 37, which you're listening to now. Then last night, I tried in my spare time after my internship internship once again to record episode 37 and this time I, I had the microphone setting to play back through the headphones but I didn't have headphones at that moment so then I had an echo effect that was just unbearable so this is the third day I'm attempting this podcast of episode 37 and third time's a charm so for this episode I initially wanted to do a rundown of the last year in view and it just takes a long time and I've already had to do this three times. All I wanted to say about this year in view is we had some amazing guests. For instance, Damian Rucci, poet, writer, uh, podcaster, also Jay Hernandez, musician, artist, podcast, monologist. We've also had other people which wanted to use aliases. We've had we've had Gibraltar, we've had Rich Rock, we've had Marie Weimer. We've had a lot of guests this year and we want to keep expanding the guests that come on. We've had Karn Soto, Whit Stevenson. A lot of great people came on this show. Trip. Bliss, one of the most classic episodes, number 18. Damian Rucci and Jay Hernandez also had classic episodes of the podcast. And besides the classics, there are a lot of just really great episodes. A lot of them are great. Some of them are decent. Either way, this last year has been a success and our listenership has increased, folks. I'm not, I need to be humble and I'm not exaggerating, but we are... We're basically InfoWars and Coast to Coast AM combined. We're right behind them in the standings. We are the next to... We're right there when they pass the torch. We're right here now. We're giving you condensed, intense intel on this show. We're exposing the truth about so many things. Extraterrestrial biological entities. The shenanigans going on on the moon. Bullshit that's going on within the caverns of Hollow Earth. Everything that's going on on Mars. Now there's all of everything going on on Mars. Past and present. And now there's a moon outside. I don't know if it's Pluto. Something's out there. Now there's, which has a glowing region that's blinking. Extraterrestrial life is there. And our technology just has to keep increasing. And any day now, our technology will be good enough to discover the truth. Like I'm talking when Google Earth and Google Moon get to be actual like HD videos live. Just walking down wherever you want to walk on Earth or the moon. That's Once that technology becomes even more crisp, forget about it. Pretty soon they're not going to be able to hide the fact about what's going on on all these planets. History's wrong, and they're going to have to really try hard to suppress that fact. They're going to write a history book talking about what's going on in the moon. 
what's going on on Mars. People aren't ready for the truth, but it's out there. Anyway, so yeah, this is just a casual episode because it's my third time tempting. Just want to say that yesterday I went out and had a toast with Jay Hernandez, host of the Minds Podcast. He wanted to go out and have a toast on the one year anniversary of the show, Black Helicopter News. So I do want to, that's why I wanted to mention this. I just wanted to say that I'm keeping track, I'm counting, and we've been here a year and a few days now. And I'm not going anywhere. So subscribers, you've subscribed to the right podcast. I don't plan on quitting anytime soon. This is going on for a long time. And just imagine all the possible shows. Anyway, so, you know, I'm going to briefly touch on these topics. I'm at Black Helicopter News on Facebook right now. And I initially went into these stories more in depth the first two times. I'm just going to breeze through them and touch on new stuff. I just can't get this info being stagnant. So there's this Mexican farmer that builds a pyramid after being ordered by alien from faraway planet. This is on express.co.uk. This is a news page. It's just, it's pretty amazing. So the gist of this is, this as they label it, Mexican peasant farmer claimed he built a pyramid in a desert on the orders of an extraterrestrial. This supposedly happened in 84. He mentioned to a Mexican newspaper that the alien warned him people would laugh at him, defame him, and say it was an act of insanity, or he did it during a bender, or he was a madman, or drug addict. Which is interesting that an alien would know those terms. He told the peasant he came from the constellation of Orion, which is a place 20 times larger than Earth. A place called Nephilim, or what they call Nephilim. People there are similar to human beings. So he describes him as, the Mexican peasant describes him as, he was a, he was a tall man with honey colored eyes, honey colored eyes, and white hair down to the ground. He was barefoot and wore a tunic with a rope. This happened a day away from his daughter being born. He said the alien claimed humans are destroying their own planet and should wake up to the fact that they must look after it like a child for our own survival. Interestingly enough, Mexico is said to be the most active country in the world for UFO and alien sightings. Last summer, video footage emerged allegedly showing an alien humanoid on the roof of a building in northern Mexico. A lot of people claim that clip proved once and for all extraterrestrials are visiting Earth while others call it a pointless hoax. I personally think that they're off base and that, and that this has a lot of credibility to the story. I don't know about you folks, but if some tall guy with white hair down his fucking feet wearing a robe with a or tunic tied with a rope and he told me he was from the Constellation Orion, I'd do what he told me because he's smarter than me. Wouldn't you? I mean, if he had the technology to fly from the constellation of Orion, that means their technology is greater than Earth. The fact that he's in a robe and barefoot, and you know what? Maybe they're so evolved that their understanding of the, like, hippie culture or something. I don't know. Maybe they're trying to be really self-sufficient and wearing boots would be, like, against the animals or something. So maybe they're like, yeah, we're just going to travel galactic distances barefoot, wearing some robes. Let's do this. But yeah, so this guy built a pretty impressive pyramid in a desert in Mexico, 600 miles from Roswell. I'm going to post a couple of these pictures from this story on Instagram, so check it out on President Zen One. Yeah, very interesting. This guy doesn't look like a drunk. He looks like a farmer. Be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of their people. Our government was responsible for the deaths of almost a hundred thousand people. Party members have been murdered, Chief Inspector. We're interrupting your regularly scheduled program to bring you this terrifying report. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just 
Pancakes. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? New York very much a city still in chaos. The phones are not working properly. The subway lines are not working properly. The sky now black with smoke in front of us. Just across the Tigris River here. This is shock and awe, Tom, for the population of Baghdad. Shock and awe, indeed. The people you liberate will witness the honorable and decent spirit of the American military. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. Come on. It is a big idea, a new world order. I love my dad. I'd kill for him. I'd go to prison for him because I love him so much. I love Bill Clinton. What does that make Hillary Clinton to the Bush family? <laughs> my sister-in-law. When you are subverting the power of government, that, that's a fundamentally dangerous thing to democracy. What do you think of Edward Snowden? I think he's a traitor. Obama is the one that kills the U.S. troops if the Russians bomb any of them. Obama is the one that put them in harm's way. Obama is the one using them as human shields. It is the most corrupt, degenerate, criminal government in American history. I'm here to warn people. You keep telling me to shut up. This isn't a game. people that have taken your asses out in this building right now we're armed to the teeth and we're not scared you got that you sons of bitches in 2012 your agency was saying quote the salafists the muslim brotherhood and al-qaeda in iraq are the major forces driving the insurgents in syria mm -hmm. in 2012 the yeah. u.s was helping coordinate arms transfers to those same groups and why did you not stop that why didn't you come forward before what were you waiting for well for you inspector i needed you I suddenly had this feeling that everything was connected. We're all part of it. Are we ready for it? Next up, I just want to say, why not nominate Ron Paul to the Supreme Court? He'd be the perfect interim candidate. He's not necessarily loyal to either side of the political spectrum. He's a libertarian, so I just think he'd be a great candidate. Next up, Daredevil has been an amazing season two. I want to do an episode just focusing on that, talking about it with someone. But Daredevil season two, I just got to say right now on record, yes, it is, was amazing. I just finished binge watching it like a few days ago it took me about three days it was amazing it's just intense it's epic there's a lot of fighting it challenges you you know i thought killing was wrong but the punisher who appears in this season challenges daredevil who won't kill but the punisher is a really good guy who just goes on a major rampage and bodies a lot of people but besides that, he's just a really great guy. He has a lot of strong ethical morals. He just went on a murder spree. Um, but he really, you know, here's what they say. Daredevil will just keep beating up people, knocking them out, sending them to the cops. They'll come right out and do the same thing again. So the critics say he's not making headband crime and the Punisher doesn't mind killing people. So he is supposedly permanently fixing the problem, so he's making more headway. But Daredevil is still intent on bringing the Punisher to justice and sending him back to jail where he belongs. Because he broke the law and went on a rampage and hurt a lot, well, embodied a lot of people. So I won't give any spoilers, but it was a great season. Great season. Next up, alien entity materializes on top of a cloud just below an airline carrier. Amazing story. This is on earthweare1.com. I'm posting this picture shortly after this episode of this seemingly giant 3D structure humanoid walking on a cloud. And it is itself refracting from the sun's rays a shadow onto the cloud that it is walking upon. This is a very scientific, rare cloud formation, but I don't buy that. I think this is truly a giant walking upon a cloud 30,000 feet up. The reason why I think is because I just realized after hearing that there could be technology where alien ships and 
alien or interdimensional beings and their transportation vessels could be actual clouds or in the shape of clouds. That's why from time to time you'll see clouds in the shape of a aircraft or UFO. That's why we're seeing this. It's because some of these ships or interdimensional ships are only able to manifest a physical form subatomically that would be reminiscent of a cloud. I know that's very complex to understand, but essentially they're cloud men and cloud ships. That's the easiest way I can break it down for you. So there's cloud men and cloud spaceships or cloud ships. And this is really, really scary because I'm posting this on Instagram, President Zem1. There's no way a cloud formation can form a giant robotic humanoid. Well, like protruding from the actual cloud. The plane slowed down. The plane actually stopped for a second just to take a picture and then it kept going. There's witnesses, a lot of witnesses. The whole cast and crew of that ship are jet. The, the workers, passengers, they said that this is most likely an apparition of an alien or interdimensional being. This analysis is proving to be authentic. Some people think it's, I don't know, people are, that don't believe are foundationless. They don't know what they're talking about. I'm posting this, this is amazing. Because there's also proof UFO activity atop the clouds. There's morphing entities, the Abani, the Xeroids. There's strange phenomena in the sky. And I see this every day. I'll see. Like the other day, I was watching a rocket ship flying. And then some sort of flying vessel flew right by it fast. And another one flew by the other one later faster. So I don't understand what's faster than a rocket. So, but it looked like it could have just been a, fa a fast plane. But I know that a fast plane can't go faster than a rocket. That's as, like, maybe they can. But I'm pretty sure, though, that what I... I'm pretty sure that I witness a UFO almost every time I look at the sky. I don't know if they're following just me or if anyone else can see them. I, I just don't know. But, and maybe I'm exaggerating, not every day and not every time I look at the sky. But I'll tell you, every week, I'm a sky watcher. I like to just stare up at the sky like a vegetable at the park. No, for real though, I'm a sky watcher and I'm witnessing many spacecraft that I can't detect an origin point or, or anything. I just see the bright lights in the sky a lot of times at night, but sometimes during the day. And it's just like, you shouldn't be there. Why are you there? Why is there a glowing light? And I know it's not a star because it shines so bright and it twinkles. You know, it twinkles like a star, but I know it's not a star because it's disappeared after a while. But it definitely twinkled like a little star, but it turned into a big flash of light. And then I went to get my camera and it was gone. Could it be it knew I was going to grab my camera? I bet you that it was the Ebani, maybe the Xeroids. Could have been the Reptoids. Who knows? I'm really hoping they had well wishes for me. I'm only interested in the good aliens that will help, that will help me help humanity. This is, I, hey, the Ibani, you know, I, the, listen, the bottom of the rabbit hole is the center of the earth. I need to talk to the tall men there. The tall, tall ass Aryans, that's the people. They know, they're very smart. They spoke to Admiral Byrd in the 1940s. They spoke to Hitler, they helped him. Hitler's there now. The media doesn't want you to know this, but trust me. I have no evidence, but I have a hunch. And every good detective has a hunch. Every good journalist has a hunch. Just ask Batman, just ask, the fuck's his name? Columbo, just ask, just ask all those fucking detectives, just ask them. Listen, this ain't a joke, man. There's shit going on that they don't want you to know, and I'm telling you that they're full of it. This giant walking on a cloud? Who knows? I'm open-minded to admit that it maybe there's a slim chance it's not real. I truly believe it to be. There's a lot of stuff we don't know. Moving on. I just want to comment that there's a giant hatch that opens up in the sun and allows UFO motherships to exit. This is becoming more and more evident every day. More and more pictures are surfacing. Now, I realized recently that the 
sun isn't actually a ball of fire that's interesting scientific news the sun isn't a flaming ball of literal fire it's generating thermonuclear heat that just radiates intensely and it's almost like a fire it's spiritually a fire but just without the form of fire that's a little deep but so at first i thought that entering through the sun as a portal would be hard to do because the fire melts but since i realize it's not fire it's actual thermonuclear heat perhaps perhaps in another dimension exists or on another planet or another planet somewhere around here exists an element that is hard enough to repel heat from the sun because the sun being so hot it would be a perfect generator for energy of something that was designed to work with it as a fuel source i'm talking about deeper than solar energy i'm talking literal bursting out of the atoms of a ray of a gamma ray so yeah there's ships coming through maybe that's what happens when you go through the black hole sometimes you come out through the star so you know, I think NASA should engage in a project that makes a nice fancy rocket ship full of our smartest individuals that are astronauts and just blast them directly into the fucking sun and see what happens. Maybe we can give them some earbuds to get back to us on Earth with. Uh, walkie talkies or something, I don't know. Give them something. Give them cell phones. Well, yeah, just let them take their cell phones with them. They'll save on the money. So, but yeah, I think we need to start firing people and ships into the sun. If these mother ships are exiting the sun, if we go in, we come out the other end, wherever that may be, that's scientific discovery of a never before seen magnitude. Isn't it worth it? All right, another thing. I just want to wrap this episode up. It's great. Before I go, I still want to touch on a couple of issues. So I'm meaning to touch upon a local writer that's making headways. He ran for Congress, Ernesto Culari. Really cool writer. Really cool writer. Met him once. He writes a scathing column every week attacking the globalist, the liberal scum, and those people. So he's worth checking out. Also, I just want to end on a positive note on episode 37. I thank you for the year of listenership. Here's to another year. And um, I think that about wraps it up. See you on the other side.